lange bevor es die Forderung nach einem staatlichen Konterangriff auf Fake News gab. So, even before we had the state attack declared on, on fake news, uh, we have also uh, seen a lot of people doing this on a civilian level, uh, actively moving against or taking action uh, against fake news. And uh, two of these people are the people uh, who are holding the talks here, here today, uh, Carolina. Uh, she's a social media editor and uh, developed the website Hoax, Hoax Map, which is also what it's going to be about today. And Räuberhose, the second speaker is, um, well, both are very interested in the more in, um, the more dangerous forms of, of fake news and the forms that is taken in, in recent debate. So please welcome Frau Lutz and Räuberhose. So, we're, we're glad uh, to be here, but we uh, got the Congress flu uh, before Congress this time, and so that's why I sound a bit the way I do. Well, so I'm getting, I'm getting right to the point. The fake news, of course, isn't a, a new thing. Uh, fake, uh, only the name fake news is really new, but basically we've seen, uh, since we've had the internet, we've had a false, a false records that we had, uh, for instance, in 1994. Uh, the news item that Microsoft had bought, the Catholic Church, uh, acquiring copyright over the Bible, etc. And of course, at the time, even then, uh, people uh, recognized pretty quickly that it was it was satire even so um, Microsoft had to had to counter the the effect so at least in this uh, US uh, specific context we, we um, we've seen so-called fake news for for quite a long long time so the other example is Bonsai Kitten, which gave the talk, the talk its name. So um, there were fake news um, where there were kittens inside glasses and um, which were growing up in classes. And this was, of course, also fake news. But years after that, there were still protests by um animal rights activists. But now in 2016, it's not that funny anymore. So 2016, we had the most curious um, headlines, like an armed man that was arrested near the sea in a pizzeria um, because there was news that in the pizzeria there was prostitution going on. So, this man read this news on Twitter and went to the pizzeria. Also in Germany, there was a case of um, um, rape report, so, uh, which was fake, and then there was diplomatic reasoning with Russia. So if we look particularly at the right wing, uh, since summer last year, we can really see that in Germany the, the incidents are increasing, but we can also see the tendency that there are a lot, there's a lot of fact-checking, a lot of corrections uh, from, from news media. Analyzing fake news, and so we can actually uh, we actually manage to plot this this phenomenon. So on the one side we have we have the rumors or the the fake news. Some 460 just on this on this map, and those are only the ones that have been have been counted in print or in in public. So, but uh, people observing the scene say, well, maybe that's just the tip of the iceberg because uh, just maybe for one city like Dresden, I can name so many incidents of, of, of false rumors. Um, so, in particular, North African and 
Middle Eastern uh, um, refugees uh, in particular are I have been featured as a, as a, as a group, um, notably, and so we do see that, um, well, we did want to try to confront people with, with the, the level of misinformation, but we also wanted to just analyze the data and see um, how, how things have, have developed over time, if, if, there, are, if there are any um, contexts that we might find or connections yeah, otherwise. Sind, uh, fast so, so in, the, in the meantime, we've had 11, we've been working on this 11, 11 months now, uh, collected these different kinds of rumors, these hundreds of, of different uh, news stories, and what are the sort of main um, focus topics that are noticeable. So um, you can see the time a plot here on the screen. This isn't only the place and the, the incident, but this is also, a, these are dated uh, news, obviously. And so you can see um, the, the rapid um, increase in, in September 2015. And Incidentally, well, this this coincides with the with the situation in Hungary that the border regulations in Hungary were changed um, to the um, changing the, the the routes and the influx of refugees. And you can also see a, a peak in in uh, later in de December, uh, January, after the incidents uh, on New Year's Eve in in Cologne. Uh, there was a lot of excitement, and there was, so there's another peak here. So these are obviously not um, exactly descriptive of the in, uh, the initial rumors that were that were then um, found to be false, but these are these are in um, the actual tr uh, real news that we mapped against it. So we also looked at uh, the region as a different. German countries. On the left, you can see um, the numbers in total numbers um, for the countries. So it's Bavaria and North Rhine-Westphalia, which are obviously the ones with the most um, people living there. And also, a lot of refugees were entering through Bavaria, so that is also a cause. And a lot of refugees were placed in North Rhine-Westphalia. Um, so this again makes a lot of sense. On the right, you can see it um, proportional to one million inhabitants. So this is the rumors per person. So there is uh, the former East German states are on the top, and then there is the next one, Bavaria. So we also looked at um, regional, at the topics which were um, most talked about in different regions. One of the topics were money and social services, which were discussed um, if refugees access them. So there is something where we could found an increase of occurrences in the area around Munich and in the south of Germany. So we are unsure why this is, if it's because Bavaria is very rich or if it's the local press which had an influence on this. On the right, the graphic shows um, um, another topic. Um, which, which is theft, and you can't see a regional distribution there, so there is no one region where this was most often occurring. So then we looked at different um, 
worauf das Ganze zurückzuführen ist, beziehungsweise Different worden sources ist, or, or origins of these hoaxes and um, for around 200 rumors we couldn't um, establish where they came from, they were unknown sources. Um, the next most often source was social media like Facebook or WhatsApp. Around 50 rumors were um, with uh, people reporting to the police, um, which were wrong. And for another 50, there was something actually happening, um, but the reporting was um, exaggerated about it. And also there were lesser extents of things that were completely invented. Ja, äh, mal kurz, wie sowas ähm, dann aussehen kann. Was wir hier sehen, ist ein Facebook-Eintrag von ähm, Tatjana Festerling. Ähm, ja, Dresden, äh, so, we can see here, uh, this is a local politician in, in Dresden, Tatjana Festerling. I'm, I'm not exactly sure about the exact relations between Pegida, the new right group in, in Dresden, and Festerling, but uh, on her Facebook page, uh, she posted this this item um, where people had observed um, that there were tents being torn down in front of in front of a hospital or being constructed in front of the hospital and there, there was then uh, immediately uh, uh, built constructed a story around this that um, that this was a, an outbreak of tuberculosis um, but in fact these were these were party tents uh, for some celebration and so this is a typical um, de development you take some incident which actually happens and um, so, and so here's another example. So this is a bit much to read through. Um, there was a bomb threat in Sigmaring. Um, allegedly, there were th three terrorists arrested. This, this was posted on a right-wing website, and if you looked for where the text fragments came from, The main source was um, a bomb threat on Baden.fm um, and other reporting on focus.de where it was reported that there was a raw bomb found um, and this was remixed to a new incident and something completely a completely new story and other thing we find is that um, representatives also um, catch on to this fake news. So this is, seems to be known to the audience. So right-wing parties in Germany like the NPD and AfD um, also catch on to this news and then inquire from the government different things related to it. One of our favorite is this one where a representative from a place <laughs> where a representative inquired about a rape, alleged rape in Maxim Gorky Park in May 2016 and the government replied um, Beantwortung seitens der Staatsregierung wird abgesehen. Die Fragen sind inhaltlich nicht bestimmbar. Der Staatsregierung ist im Freistaat Sachsen kein maxim burgi park bekannt. So, basically, the, the federal government said, uh, in this federal state, Sachsen, we don't actually know of any maxim Gorky park at all. So, we can't answer your questions. So on the on the picture you can see of the representative a local local party functionary and so he was obviously accused of not at least googling
Das ist jetzt nur ein Beispiel. Tatsächlich stellt sich ja die Frage. So, these are all just um, examples, obviously, but the, the underlying question is, of, of course, who, is, who wants to spread these rumors? And we were looking to, to find the original source, but it's not always possible uh, to actually localize a source, and sometimes it's just not worth, worthwhile. Um, But in some cases, it's it's interesting to, to follow this kind of lead. So, for instance, if you have um, supposed uh, vic victims of, of a crime, for instance, so uh, this is something that you can easily Uh, find out that, that the source is a private uh, Facebook uh, profile, which can, uh, of course, be someone else. But um, this is where the, where the rumor st started spreading. Uh, some of these cases only became known through Facebook comments or people actually calling in, replying, uh, researchers with newspapers or people who maybe know local politics, uh, correcting and reacting to these stories. And, of course, we have um, quite a number of, of news items that were just basically made up, even if they were eyewitnesses, um, but just gave the story a wrong spin, not, not necessarily making up a rumor, but uh, placing it in a, in, a, in a context or allowing it to uh, run loose. And especially if this happens in a context like the AfD, the uh, new ultra-right party in, in Germany. But this same, similar things are happening, of course, in Austria and in Switzerland, where you also have a very strong German language uh, right Facebook networks, like, for instance, of from the NPD, the German right-wing party. So, and now? So, what's next? If we want to, if we want to look at the U.S. election results, um, we we saw a lot of debate about uh, how how fake news or um, false communications uh, in in impacted the election results. But we have only recently started looking at, at solutions or at, or at the situation to, 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 to look at uh, fake news or even be able to flag this uh, as, as difficult content uh, on, on Facebook channel at least. This is of course a lot of work for Facebook managing these tickets and at least in the German debate we've had about hate speech, uh, the, the collaboration isn't working too well yet, but at least uh, the, the technical possibility is, is being developed in Germany. It might be difficult, but um, to actually technically flag contents as fake news. But the situation in Germany is difficult because it's not necessarily coming from so-called uh, fake news uh, websites specifically, but um, Um, through through other channels or th uh, through other uh, means of distribution, and so it's harder to pinpoint. Uh, this is uh, also well very close to the um, Lügenpresse, the lying press um, slogan. Um, this has become a big rift in in German society or debate. Uh, how to treat these uh, hate speech versus uh, classic uh, standard press, uh, the so-called lying press. So, especially the U.S. media wants to cooperate with Facebook on this. Um, the Washington Post has released a Chrome extension, which is fact-checking Trump's tweets. <laughs> They have a lot to do. But also, here in Germany, there are different initiatives. Um, so the legislation, uh, for legislation there is talked about um, banning fake news and making it a criminal, criminal record if someone um, shares fake news or distributes fake news. So you could imagine where this could possibly lead to, or maybe not. 
hat zum Thema natürlich was zu sagen und möchte ein äh, Fake News Abwehrzentrum. And there is also talk about having um, a truth ministry or as uh, it is debated uh, a Defense Center against Fake News. Quite interesting as this minister has also uh, been reported on our website for hoax news. So he said that around 30 percent, um, which pretend to be Syrian refugees, are actually not from Syria. And another quote he said, which is fa fake, um, is that there are doctors labeling um, people who are about to be deported, um, that they have, they write a medical report, that they um, are in a bad health condition, so can't be deported. And he was also using numbers that it was about 70 percent of males under, for, under the age of 40. Und wollen eigentlich nicht mehr hin. Ähm, ja. So what's next? Um, well, I think we have been there, so we don't want to go there again. So thank you for your attention. That has been about it already. Um, yeah. Many thanks to Lutz and Caroline. Um, if you have any questions, please go to the microphones. Hi, thank you for the talk. What I was asked was if you didn't have a little joy about the new law. Because there are such people in our community. So a question from, from the floor. Don't you actually enjoy these kind of legislation procedures? The Ministry of the Interior seems to in, uh, take pride in the whole process. Uh, so, if you can, if you can force someone legally to to prominently articulate uh, your campaign, I think that's quite a. A helpful campaign against, for instance, politicians who make up numbers as a fact-checking instance, if I understood it correctly. So, if you were to employ that kind of technique against politicians or use it against them, well, I think our main interest is another, or at least we're not uh, politicians, or I think a lot of people just um, have the tendency maybe to yeah, spread contents that are not strictly true. Uh, there are some uh, jokes we don't even dare to make anymore, and where's what's art and what's satire? It is a, it is a problem that to, not, to not dare things, and I think it's not the right way to um, try and regulate or even over-regulate in uh, pr processes like this, because this is still about free speech in, in the end, even if that's a very over-welcome expression. Um, uh, and I forget, I forgot something. This is Dr. Axel Stoll, a notorious German uh, conspiracy. conspiracy theorist, and uh, who died and has acquired some sort of strange cult following. Genau in Österreich gab es längere Zeit mit Paragraphen, wo es um so in, in Austria, we did have that, that paragraph that uh, expressly per pertained to f spreading fake news, but uh, this, uh, the, this, no one was ever convicted due to this paragraph, so in the end they just basically... Ich frage mich, wo auf der Karte der Maxim Gorki Park eingezeichnet ist. Oder ein bisschen prinzipieller gefragt, habt ihr den Schauplatz von den erfundenen Geschehnissen eingezeichnet? Uh, another question from the floor. Um, well, the Maxim Gorki Park that didn't exist in Saxonia. The, where would we be able to find that on the map? Or how did you map, the, map these that you couldn't uh, place otherwise? 
Well, very, very rarely there is no place at all, not even not even the federal state. And in the worst case, yeah, we did uh, sometimes, you know, just put Berlin. But in the case of the uh, the Maxim Gorky Park, we picked the the Landtag, the, the local parliament in in Sachsen, in the federal state in Dresden. And another question, different, also uh, legal alternatives, I think both aren't really satisfactory, but I'd like to see what strategies from social media users work, or if there's any kind of counter speech, uh, if there's reach or what are what are your experiences or practices uh, except like large scale trolling and that's not necessarily productive as as we all know that it's not um, it, not convincing to people to discuss in this way but what are your what's your advice there it, it is like the classical um, counter-reporting in the big media. They most often don't reach as many people as the original fake news. So there is one example where a store owner um, reacted very quickly to some fake news. He put a sign in front of his store and also put a post on social media um, and this post was shared more often than the rumor, um, which, something which has shown that if there is a very quick reaction, um, it can have an impact, but if the rumor is allowed to run free, it's very hard to intervene. Gerüchte verbreitet werden, also nicht alle von uns scrollen sich täglich durch. It also depends like, on which networks these news are shared. Not everyone of us is scrolling through Pegida, so the right-wing networks uh, or right-wing discussion forums. Um, so it's also... Um, uh, it also has to be known by the media that they regulate their comments and delete inappropriate comments. This is more about the technical side uh, of your um, website. Do you have some kind of ticket system where you um, <laughs> look at incoming reports and mark them. Um, no, we don't. Uh, we were too lazy so far. We only do this part-time next to our full-time job. Um, so this is on our to-do list to actually have a ticket system like this. The internet has a question. How many people are working on hoax maps? It's two. <laughs> Which is not completely correct. A lot of the um, reports we have on the map are crowdsourced, so people are sharing these via email and Twitter, so it's not completely correct to say we are only two, but there are a lot of people helping us. And the other question is, was uns das eigentlich nicht allen klar, dass genau dies kommt mit dem großen Boom der Blogs? Another question we got from the internet is, wasn't that all clear uh, that this would be happening with a big boom of blocks? Vielleicht. Maybe. Danke, Internet. Und dann haben wir noch eine Frage an der vier. Hallo. Uh, auf jeden Fall danke für den Talk. Ich finde es mega wichtig, dass ihr das macht. Uh, sowohl für nachher parlamentarische Debatten über sowas als auch für alltägliche Debatten. Hello, thanks again for the talk. It's very important what you do. Uh, on the one hand, for the parliamentary debates, but also for the public debate. 
zuzunehmen wie verrückt. So your graphics has shown um, different kind of things. Um, one has shown the increase of fake news um, during the so-called refugee crisis during last autumn and the beginning of the year. And have you um, balanced this with the reports about refugees which has have been out in general? So like um, maybe this also changes the topic change over time like last year it might have been about Greece. No, so far we haven't um, cross-checked this with a general news about refugees. There are several topics which um, are reported on higher in certain times. So um, it's very likely that um, in the beginning of the year, January, February, there were a lot of reports about refugees. Um, so there has been a lot of reports in general, so it might very likely be that this also uh, correlates with having a lot of fake news about refugees so but we haven't worked on this specifically because we are only doing this in our free time and um, haven't had the time but I think it would be very cool if other people could um, like try to do this and put this in correlation. For the second part of the question, there always have been fake news. There always have been fake news in uh, official media and the Boulevard as well. So we also have incidents which showed up two years ago, but like go back way back to the 90s, like um, chain like chain letters. But there is also a bigger audience for this fake news, and uh, so the fake news resonate um, a lot more with the audience. So it's not just a background noise, but the public reacts a lot. So how how? Uh, can we authorize this or can you, uh, are you, basically my question is, are you immune uh, against this kind of misinformation your, yourselves? Well, for, for the case that we do make a mistake, which, which we haven't done so far, I think we just have the, the, the principles where we always um, share our news items on, on Twitter and we, of course, just have the, the policy for, for verification uh, to, well, to be very uh, open about it if, if that would be the case, but it luckily hasn't so far. But, of course, uh, in terms of fact-checking and verification, we do uh, just go all the way and you know, call back and call uh, authorities or maybe uh, check stories with police um, and go back to the individual points of the fake story. Um, plus, well, on, on, on top of that, we there are several stories that we didn't uh, include in the hoax map because they weren't entirely false. And so, if in doubt, we just say oh, we 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 take a break or don't try and over hurry things and just take a look at how a story develops maybe over a couple of days. So, give the ladies a big hand. <laughs>